Hi everybody, can you hear me? Okay. All right, thanks for coming um, to Back to the Future of Search. Um, to kick things off, I thought a bit of a background in me, just so you'll get the two second overview of who you're listening to and who's rabbiting on about this techno babble. Uh, I'm an SEO specialist, um, one of Australia's leading SEO copywriters and trainers. I've been involved in the web since 99, 2000. So I'm nearly going on 20 years now. Uh, digital producer. My claim to fame, if I can indulge in the term, is that I produced Australia's first ever streaming film and music website. So nowadays, of course, we don't bat an eye about uh, watching streaming media on our computer. August 14, 2000, sponsored exclusively by Apple. Um, IndieFilmWeb.com was a site that we launched, which had the, the very first uh, live streaming. Um, I'm in another life, I'm a professional novelist and screenwriter, repped out of uh, Hollywood by one of the big three agencies. And go back further in time, I was a professional film actor, six features, co-starring in three, opposite folks like Ray Liotta, Lance Hendrickson, Ernie Hudson, Julian McMahon, etc. But I've been involved in SEO and the web for, like I said, uh, 18 odd years. Okay, and for the last six years, I've been running uh, SEO North Sydney. Now, a bit of an overview. To kick off, we have a bit of context, okay? This is where I want to take you back to the early days of the World Wide Web so we can have a framework for what comes later, okay? So we'll fire up the DeLorean to 88 miles per hour and take us back to a time before this time. Then we'll get into the serious stuff, which is the takeaways, which is what you really want, okay? And from there, time permitting, we'll get into Q&A. I apologize in advance if we run a little bit late. Uh, I normally speak for uh, one whole day or two whole days on this topic, so uh, we've done our best to compress within the time frame that we've got. Um, before we do kick off, though, can I just you know, have a bit of a gauge of the room? Can I have a show of hands, people who are business owners or who uh, run their own website uh, for profit? Okay. It's terrific. And how many people here are uh, designers or coders or in some way involved? Great. And how many people turned up for the free food? <laughs> All right, that was me. Um, okay, so now let's kick off by firing up the DeLorean to 88 miles per hour to go back, not to 1955 like Marty McFly, but to a time far more interesting to us, to the early 1990s. <laughs> Now, for the millennials in the audience, I had, a very, I had a very strong desire to dance during this period, put on some MC Hammer pants. But my fiance said she would leave me if I did, so I'm going to try to still. Now, these, believe it or not, millennials were motion pictures of the era. I love that movie. All right. Now, as you can see, it was a different time. So let's end this digital shenanigans before the millennials in the audience go into a musically induced coma and start bleeding. From the... Well, the music's far more interesting than me. Just run with that. Um, okay, so we're going to go back to the early days of search, okay, to the early 90s, when a website looked like this. Now look at this beauty. What do we notice about this website? Okay, there's nothing much to it. It was and is a thing of beauty because of its simplicity. Why did this website exist? This is the Sydney, Sydney Morning Herald, um, Sydney University website circa maybe about 93, give or take. Now what we notice with this is that the website exists for a very simple reason. And that reason was to display quality content so that other people interested in that quality content could access it remotely from across the city, across the state, across the country, across the world. Okay, imagine that as a concept. Building a website purely so that great information on a particular topic, quality information, could be peer reviewed by somebody else. Now the reason I've, I've particularly chosen this website is that in the early days, as I'm sure we all know, for those of us old enough, in the early days of the World Wide Web, 
websites were primarily, though not exclusively, the domain of universities. It literally was universities, academics, publishing content so that other academics could read it, peer review it. Okay, and then of course, business gets involved. When business gets involved, everything turns south. And everything turns south because of search engines. So in this example, search engines become the evil of the age, okay? Which is ironic given I run an SEO company. But the one thing I love about this site as well, you probably can't see it from back there, but if you zoom in a bit, how about that? In case you can't find what you need, if you've thought of looking up yellow pages, <laughs> imagine that on your website today. Actually, imagine anybody using yellow pages today. Not gonna happen. Now. How to rank your website pre-Google. This is where, as soon as search engines got involved, what happened was indexing happened. So there was a lot of content, and search engines, early search engines, the Archies, the, the um, web crawlers, the Info6, et cetera, the Excites, they started indexing the web and sorting it. When you do a taxonomy, you drill down, you find information, and then you resort the information into lists. As soon as lists became involved, Somebody went above somebody else. And as soon as somebody went above somebody else, somebody got grumpy, okay? So when that happened, when commerce started to come into the web, not that we knew. Back then we knew that there was gold in them, thar hills. We didn't know what the gold was and we didn't know how to get it. But we knew for damn sure that we didn't want somebody else to get there first, okay? So when search engines, early search engines came into it, we used a lot of nefarious tricks to try to rank, okay? And I'm gonna zoom through these because we've got a lot of slides, so I apologize for powering through. Keyword stuffing, cloaking, hidden text, and my favorite, popular slash rude words. Now, keyword stuffing, obvious. Use the words a lot of times. The more keywords you have on your page, the better you would have theoretically ranked. Cloaking is a trick whereby you have two versions of your website, one that the bots read, and one that humans read, okay? Hidden text. Ordinarily, you'd have a text with, with, with black content, okay, or content um, in a black uh, color. What we see here, we're obviously showing it for you guys, but hidden text was huge. So everybody knew, oh, we need more keywords, we need more keywords. So what they did, they would hide the keywords by having white text on a white background, which allowed you to have a truckload of keywords on your website that didn't annoy people by just, just being there in front. However, many websites had this. This is a made up example, right? But the idea, the idea behind this was, if you say you sold pens in Sydney, okay? Maybe 2,000 people a month search for, you know, pen Sydney, blue pen Sydney, but how many people search for sex or for porn terms, okay, for adult terms, right? A huge amount of numbers. So the idea was, they would have in what we would now, uh, as designers, you know, to class as the footer, they would have a huge uh, sway of adult terms, one after the other after the other, which had nothing to do with the product you're selling, okay? But the idea was, more traffic is searching for that, so we'll bring that traffic to our website, even though we, we look at that and go, well, it's not relevant traffic, it, it's pointless, but again, they didn't know what they were doing. So if you look at this one, you can see the name Alyssa Milano stuck in. Right? Everybody probably remembers Alyssa Milano from uh, Who's the Boss, I think it was, and Charm. She just, she's an actress, talented, you know, pretty uh, uh, Hollywood actress. For some reason, in the late 90s, early noughties, her name became synonymous with this style of SEO. So you would have Pontum, 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 Alyssa Milano. Pontum, 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 Alyssa Milano. Never knew why, and the poor girl must have suffered you know, enormously because of it. Now let's go back to the future so we can see how that applies to us today. Right, let's have a look at the digital landscape as we know it. Again, I will be zooming through these so we can get to the takeaways. So we understand the landscape is split into three primarily. Search engine optimization, which is organically, being found organically. SEM, which is the paid stuff such as Google pay-per-click, retargeting, geofencing and the like. However, it's not paid, ad, uh, paid uh, links. Don't mistake SEM for being paid links, okay? Against Google's guidelines, don't do it. SMO is social media optimization where we use web 2.0 platforms to get traffic. For those who don't necessarily know the, the, the difference between web 1.0 and web 2.0, most of the web is 1.0. So 1.0 primarily was 
this is our website. Come to our website and view our content. Right? In 2004 5, when the MySpaces and the Facebooks and the like starting to kick off, they changed the paradigm, so hence the new name. And a Web 2.0 is viewed as this is our website, come to our website, but guess what? You can add content. Before that, we wouldn't want to do that. I, I run my own website. I don't want you writing on my website. I, I don't even know who you are, what, what you're going to say. Are you going to post crap? Is it relevant, etc.? Free content was the Web 2.0 major device. Global search volumes. We all understand that to rank your website, you need to rank in Google. Okay? This should be reasonably self-explanatory for people in the Western world. In Australia, as you can see, 94% of people search using Google. Disproportionate amount. Okay? In most of the Western world, it's like that. Google doesn't own everywhere. Like in, in China, like Baidu was, is, is by far the biggest. In Russia, Yandex, etc. Um, but an interesting stat that I thought when I was putting this together, look at the USA. Google's market share has dropped to 63%. Now that really surprised me because it was like 90 or something. How did it drop? What are Bing doing well or better than Google? Okay, um, Not much that I can see, but you know, the, the numbers are real, the numbers don't lie. So we know we've got to rank in Google and we've got to get on the first page if we want to be found. We want to get traffic to our website. Now, there's, a, there's an old gag in, in SEO that we have is, where's the best place to hide a body? On page two of Google. Why? Because no one's ever going to find it. Be honest now. But what numbers are there? Page one gets 91.5% of the search traffic organically. Page two, 4.8, and 1.1, and so, so on further down, right? The logic, obviously, is if you're not on page one, you are invisible. However, because of the changes to our digital landscape, just being on page one, it isn't enough anymore. Time was, it was. Okay? Your business could grow by being on page one, but how page one is now laid out with the new, the, the new um, layout that Google has, with the Google Ads at the top, and the Google Map 3-pack, and sometimes the knowledge graph, and various other things coming before the organics, where you come on first page is far more important now than ever before. Look at that. 32.5% of people click on the first organic search, 17.6 on the second, 11.4 on the third. Think about the numbers. 61.5% of all organic traffic is in the top three. Okay? You want the phone to ring, that's where your SEO company needs to get you. Getting on the first page is great. That's the first battle. Getting above the fold, fold being what we class as top five. Third battle is top three. Then, of course, SERP1. Now, when I use the word SERP, an acronym I'm sure you probably all heard, uh, S-E-R-P, traditionally meant for search engine ranking page. So if you're on the third page of Google, you were SERP3, but colloquially used by SEO uh, companies and SEO practitioners to meaning search engine ranking position. So if you're one in Google, you're SERP1. If you're second on page two, you're SERP12. It's just an easier way to work out where you are. Okay? So getting on first page is important, but where you rank is stupendously important. The thing with organic search, as opposed to uh, paid search, SEM, is the paid search is pretty black and white. It's mathematics. Like if I pay $10 a click, and my competitor is paying $9.50 a click, I will always rank above him. Right? Unless he ups his, uh, ups his bid, which of course he will, because he doesn't want to be second. But the great thing with us is that organic search is part mathematics and part alchemy. Okay? It's, there's so many things go into it. And that's because the mathematical part of it is made up by algorithms, which we all obviously know, but how many? Okay? There are a lot of algorithms. I, I'm not going to have time to run through these like I would ordinarily when talking of this, but a, a, a quick overview. PageRank, Penguin, Panda, Hummingbird, and Pigeon. Now, PageRank was the elephant in the room for nearly 20 years. PageRank was created by Larry Page, who with Sergey Brin are the two co-founders of Google. It's a play on his name. Page rank, but it ranks pages from 0 to 10. Up until 2011, page rank was updated every three months, regular as clockwork. Since then, it's been absorbed into the core algorithm, Google's core algorithm. So we don't know what, what page rank a website has. It's still relevant. People say, oh, Google, ignore Google page rank, it's dead. It's not dead. Links are powered by page rank continually. Okay? They're still important. We just can't measure it anymore. So the idea was that Google couldn't read your content like a human being. So what it, what it did, it had a voting system by links. So the more links you have coming to your page, 
the better the content on that page must be. So if website A links to a page on website B, it's a tacit endorsement of the content on website B. Why, says Google, would somebody link to a page as rubbish? Well, they wouldn't, would they? Obviously, duh. So if they're linking, it's a thumbs up to the content. Except that SEO companies and affiliate marketers and the like raped and pillaged the algorithm, which was and still is full of holes. Now, Penguin is tied into link building. Um, I'll talk about Penguin a bit later, so I won't dwell too much. But ultimately, Penguin was created to stop na unnatural or toxic, quote unquote, links. Links that aren't real, or at least in Google's terms, aren't perceived to be real. Okay? There's a lot of other things that it does, but primarily, it's to stop toxic link building. Okay, this is a quick example of uh, toxic links from a, a client of mine. When they signed up with me in 2013, they were penalized by Penguin so badly, you couldn't even type in their name. So what they'd done is they'd gone and outsourced to an agency in Melbourne, who, unbeknownst to them, as many big agencies do, outsourced to India or to the Ukraine or Russia or wherever the hell else they go and bake, make these dodgy links, okay? And they had all these links, and Google caught them with their hand in the cookie jar, and they got punished, not the company. The company got booted, right? These are the guys that suffered, and you couldn't even type their name. And you can see back then, look at the last two. Terrorist jobs, mail enhancement reviews. What's that got to do with a company that sells windows and doors and aluminium windows and, and the like? Nothing. Today, you type Windows Sydney or aluminium Windows Sydney or any number of other searches. They're SERP 1. Back then, they weren't even SERP 1,000. Panda, which again I'll talk a, a, a bit about later, but Panda is hugely important, okay? And ultimately, it's all about quality content. Panda was created by a guy called Navneet Panda, who's a software engineering guru for Google. His remit, him and his team, their remit, in the early part of 2010-11, was to create an algorithm that can read a page like a human being, okay? That's what they did, and when Panda launched in 2011-12, it changed everything about your website, okay? So this is stupendously important. Um, yeah, quality content is self-evident, but you, you know, it, be it bears repeating, and repetition is the mother of learning, but quality content is the foundation that all of our SEO should be based on. Hummingbird, this is another big, big, big one. Okay, Hummingbird is an indexing algorithm that runs search queries through a synonym and modification module. What does that mean? It's techno babble. All it ultimately means is that Hummingbird discovered that 60% of all search is long tail. Not trophy phrases like SEO Sydney, what I want where I want it, but longer tail searches and using multiple words, often in ways that, that had never been typed before, hard to believe. So what Hummingbird does, it reads between the sense of the question, which was never no algorithm could do before. What you've got is a, an algorithm that can, if you type in SEO Sydney, right? What I want, where I want it. That's what you do to type me, right? To, to find my company, okay? What I want, where I want it. But lo and behold, what if somebody types, how do I get my small business website on the first page of Google? I haven't typed the word SEO. I haven't typed the, the location Sydney. But Hummingbird now reads between the words, the sense of the question, and it says, ah, who gets businesses on the first page of Google? Ah, SEO companies. He's looking for an SEO company. Ah, but where? You haven't typed in a location, so it'll ping the device you're using and go, ah, you're on your iPad in Gloria Jeans in North Sydney. You're looking for an SEO company close to you, but I haven't used any of the keywords. Pigeon, another one. We'll talk about local a bit later. Very important. This is all about Google is, is trying its best to rank local business locally. So if you're, a, if you're in Manly and you're looking for a kitchen company close to Manly or on the northern beaches, Google wants to show kitchen companies in the northern beaches or in Manly. They don't want to show companies in Penrith that service the northern beaches or service Manly. Um, Google Pigeon ties in with other uh, local algorithms such as uh, Hawk and uh, um, uh, or a whole bunch of others. There are like several of them, but they, all much, they do much of the, much the same thing. Okay, but we'll talk about local in a bit. Now, these are the takeaways. The top 10 things that you need to rank your website, what you need to focus on. Number one, website security. Now, when I talk about this, because we have an audience with a lot of uh, WordPress 
uh, aficionados, of course. I'm not talking about, oh, I don't want my site to be hacked. Of course you don't want your site to be hacked. I'm talking about HTTPS. Now, for those who don't know, HTTP, of course, is Higher Text Transfer Protocol. Most websites are you know, HTTP colon four slash four slash www dot your domain. Google is now bullying everybody to move to HTTPS, so Higher Text Transfer Protocol Secure. HTTPS was created for e-commerce websites, so that if you collect credit card information, you've got to have 128-bit encryption to make sure no one can nick it and go on a spending spree. Terrific. We love that. Well done, Google. But Google is now bullying everybody to do it for, their, for normal websites. Just because, what, I, I, I gather an email from someone or a business name, or right? If you don't have it, you need it. Now, there are ways to get this, and so you need what's called an SSL certificate, OK? Now, a secure socket layer certificate. They can cost anything from a couple of hundred bucks and up. So, but if you're serious about it, get yourself an EV SSL certificate, OK? An extended validation SSL. What you're looking at, the, the top one, it just, these are just random, uh, uh, random examples, right? That's what it, it looks like in the um, search bar now if you don't have an SSL certificate, OK? That tells Google that you're unsecure. The information you gather is unsecure, not to be trusted. You will be downgraded in Google search. The middle one is a standard. The Mr. Switch one is just a standard SSL certificate, the cheaper variety. Get that if that's all you can afford. It's fine, better than nothing, good to have. But the bottom one, the ComBank, is what's known as an EV SSL. That's maybe about a grand a year. You can get them a bit cheaper depending where you get it, okay? If you're serious about this, go the EV. Number nine, website design and UX. I'm not going to dwell too much on this because you've seen many terrific presenters talking about design during the last two days, okay? And I don't want to uh, go over ground that you've already covered. But ultimately, your website design and the UX, the user experience, is of paramount importance to how Google reads the analytical information it gathers on the human interactions with your website, okay? So if somebody comes to your website and they stay for 30 seconds and nicks off, and, and they search for exactly what the page is about, Google goes, hmm, okay, they didn't click anything, they weren't that interested, right? If they stay for three and a half minutes, and then they go to four other pages, and they stay for seven and a half minutes on your website, these are all quality signals. And a lot of that internally is driven by your website design. Click-through rate is important, and click-through rate is important not only for somebody to click on your listing on a Google search, but internally. So if they go from one page to another because you've got great UX, okay, this helps drive traffic, keep people in your website and on your pages for longer. Okay? Ultimately, in design, as we always know, keep it simple, stupid. Right? Make it a great website that loads quickly and the users can work out how to, how to use your website in eight seconds without having to, to waste their time. Number eight, brand mentions and social signals. Brand mentions are huge, and they're getting ridiculously important. As time moves on, I wouldn't be surprised in five years if this is in the top three. Okay? Brand mentions are broken down into four forms. Social media mentions, customer reviews, branded search, and web mentions. Okay? Social media, obviously, somebody retweets you or mentions you on the Facebook page that can be read by Google, not a personal one, which only your friends can read. Customer reviews. Good customer reviews, obviously. Terrific to have. Uh, nowhere near as important as they should be, but important nonetheless. And will become more important when Google works out how to stop the fake ones from happening. Branded searches, when somebody types your name. And web mentions, you know, you get mentioned in a blog or, or some other form, OK? Um, but the, what you don't realize, or m many people don't realize, is that when you, get a, when you get a branded mention, you often get a link, right? But if you don't get a link, it's still an inferred link or an implied link. So in other words, Google understands that the words that surround your brand, even if they haven't hyperlinked it, is where it's going to be. OK, so local search, and I'm zooming through this because of the timing. OK, local search is stupendously important. Ultimately, it's about NAP, name, address, and phone number. Make sure your Google Maps listing marries 100% with your website. So if your address on Google Maps is 34 John Street, Parramatta, don't have on your, on your website unit 4 slash 34 John Street, Parramatta. Make it match. Once you've done that, rinse and repeat in other citation uh, uh, sites such as Yellow Pages, Yelp, True Local, etc. Now, voice search, my goodness, we could spend a whole topic on this, but I won't because it's not that important, even though 20% of search, can you believe that? 20% of search is done in voice. It's ridiculous. But most of these searches are people asking 
Google Home, uh, uh, excuse me, can you tell me what the capital of Argentina is, Google, right? It's nothing that we as business people can leverage, okay? But we need to have content that answers the why of the questions as opposed to just goes and focuses on, on keywords. Mobile friendliness, obviously stupendously important once again. Google has rolled out the mobile first index. Up until now, you've, you've not necessarily realized that your website was being copied onto an index on a thousand servers and a thousand edge servers around the world by Google. So when you search, you're not searching online, you're searching on a copy of the World Wide Web on Google's servers, okay? Previously, for the first 20 years of their, of their existence, they used, to, they used to index the desktop version of your website. Now, from, from like literally March, they, they are now going to index your mobile version first and more frequently, and your desktop far less. So if you want to rank, you'll have different rankings for mobile and for um, your desktop, and Google gives more importance now to the mobile environment, right? 57% of people, okay, search on a mobile device. Website speed, again, look at Google's own, uh, own studies have shown that if your um, website loads at six seconds as opposed to one, your bounce rate goes up 106 seconds. So design a website that loads, every page loads in no more than two seconds. I can't tell you how important this is. You, you bunch, you, you know, many designers in the room, we all understand this. Make it, make it load quickly. And if you've got a, a, a thousand lines of code to show your website as you want it to see, and you can do that in 500 lines of code, use 500 lines of code. Make it load fast. Three, Rank Brain. Rank Brain is a state of the art machine learning system that utilizes artificial intelligence to interpret and improve new searches. Now, what does that mean? Basically, it means that it looks at new searches, which is about 60% of searches. It looks at new searches that it's never come across before and says, look, I don't quite understand what this means, but based on my previous understanding of searches around this topic, I think you're meaning this, so I'll show you this answer. Even though 60% of searches it's never heard of before, okay? This didn't exist before 2015. We'd never heard of it until Google announced it. Links. Doesn't surprise anyone that this is still important, okay? Remember the hierarchy of links, not all links are created equal. At the bottom of the pyramid, you've got the dot coms, the dot nets, the dot co dot uk's, the dot in's, the dot whatever, okay? Things that are not Australian. On the second level, we've got dot com that I use and dot net that I use. A link from a local Australian site is far more important in Google's eyes because anyone can get a dot com. But I've got to have an ABN to get a .com.au or a .net.au, okay? Much more important if you have an Australian link than that. Higher up, you've got the .net.edu's, .net.au's, um, which is stupendously hard to get. And above that, you've got the .gov.au's. If you've got a government link, it's worth a thousand other links. And last, but by no means least, original, well-written, long-form quality content, the single most important thing, because it's the one thing you can control. And imagine you know 30, you've, you've got 30 years of experience. You're, you're, you run a kitchen company, right? You've got 30 years of experience. But on your website, you've got like seven pages and a couple of hundred words. Google is not psychic. It doesn't understand that you've got 30 years of knowledge. That knowledge has to be expressed professionally and through a really in-depth IA, information architecture. It has to be spread out so Google knows that you know everything there is to know about making kitchens because if it's not there, Google isn't psychic. One last slide to give you a quick uh, te couple of take, 10 takeaways for Panda. Does your article read like it was written by an expert? Does it have a minimum of 500 words? Yoast tells you 250 words, right? Don't believe it. SEO companies know, and statistics have proven this, that to rank first in organic search, you need 1,750 to 2,500 words per page. Two and a half thousand words per page. It's an enormous amount of words. And you say, well, people don't read that much. Google reads that much. Is, it 100, is the content 100% original or have you spun it? Does it have you know, gram grammatical spelling errors, just basic year 10 stuff, just you know, dot the I's and cross the T's? Does it offer any new insights into the subject or are you just regurgitating you know, what's been said a thousand times before? Does it discuss the topic fairly? Okay, very important to do that. The pros and the cons. Is the website, the article, on a recognized authority in the field? Are you an authority site? Okay, you'll only get that over time. Or are you just a random blog talking about whatever? 
Is the article good enough to like, tweet, or bookmark? Again, comes under quality. Is the article well enough written that you could rightfully expect to see it in a publication or uh, some kind of print book? Okay? This is, this is, these are Google's words, by the way, not mine. And lastly, does the article have pictures and or videos as well as words? Because 90% of Panda is about the words. 10% is about the other stuff, the multimedia experience. Do you have a lot of uh, annoying ads pop up? Do you have uh, uh, video? Do you have audio? Do you have pictures? Do you, other people learn different ways. Okay, so 10% of it is that, is the design, and, and the multimedia, 90% of it is the words. And lastly, the last slide I will leave you is Warren Buffett. Why Warren Buffett? Well, Warren Buffett is one of the world's most successful investors, as we know. And as of two days ago, when, um, <laughs> when Facebook plummeted by 161 million, he's gone from the sixth most richest man in the world to the third. Okay? He understands, as we need to understand, that the long game is the only game worth playing. So he invests his strategy because he sees his business there in the long term. He invests in the Microsofts, in the Woolworths, in the Apples, in the IBMs. The long game is the only game worth playing. So if your SEO company is promising you, oh my God, I can fix it all. I get you on the first page. You'll be number one tomorrow. I guarantee it. Garrett, right? Walk away. Right? None of us own Google. It's a process. It'll take three months minimum for you to get any real love from Google. And if you're in a really competitive search, six to 12 months. That's the reality. Bed, you know, batten down the hatches and get the budget prepared for that. Because if you want to own your business niche and you want your business to be there in five years, 10 years, you've got to plan for the long strategy, the long game, and not go for the quick wins. Because anything that goes up quickly will come down quickly. Um, Thank you. Question and answers, if we have any time. Thank you. I think we've got about 10-ish minutes for questions. So anyone who has any questions? Uh, oh, yep, there's one over there. Oh, it's just like a comment as well, like with that Cloudflare SSL, you can get it for free, but it doesn't do end-to-end -end encryption unless you get the business plan or something. So yeah, just maybe compare the EV SSL with Cloudflare and maybe let's encrypt. There's, there's a Moz blog on it as well if you Google it. Say that again, sorry. Oh, uh, like Cloudflare. Have you used Cloudflare before? No, we, no, I haven't uh, it, actually. It gives you like a free SSL from Cloudflare's edge to your users. Yeah. But it doesn't encrypt from Cloudflare to your origin server. That's the issue with, with that. I right. guess my comment on that would be, without knowing that particular kind of platform, I would say that you get what you pay for. And if, I, like, if I'm serious about an SSL certificate, I'll buy it from a reputable source. And if, I'm, if I've got the coin, I'll, I'll get an EV every day. And it's, you can get those for full 50, you know, but you can be up to a, a $1,000. But the bottom line is, yes, you need an SSL. We understand where you get it from, ultimately. You know, if you're in that kind of middle bracket of what sort of SSL, I don't think it's going to matter too much. It's just better to have something than nothing. But if you want to go the extra mile, and this is just one facet of a, of a much broader picture, because Google has over 200 ranking signals and over 10,000 sub-ranking signals. But as I always say, it's like they're, they're making dinner, you know, and, and they're making soup. And, and some of the ingredients are really important, like the meat. And some of them are just like, you know, oregano or something on top, right? They're all in the soup, but I really should, I need to focus on this. SSL is one of the top 10 now, so that's definitely something to focus on. Yeah, and just another thing I've noticed, like if you go to apple.com, it actually has their company in the green bit of the HTTPS. Whereas if you go to any other HTTPS site, it'll be like just secure in green. So maybe that's part of EV. I haven't used EV before, so. Well, I, I'd say that you know, Apple are not short of coins, so I suspect they've got an EV. Right. So just or, you know, any, any bank or financial institution or mm -hmm. any you know, quote-unquote you know, real company, as in by you know, a large multi-million dollar company, instantly go for that because it's in the grand scheme of it, what's a grand to them? Facebook doesn't have AD. Yeah, Facebook's are lauded to themselves, <laughs> I suspect. <laughs> Maybe they wouldn't have lost 161 billion <laughs> if they were more secure. <laughs> All, right. All right, thank you. Um, you said that RankBrain uses AI to interpret new searches. Yeah, new searches, yeah. Yeah, do you have strategies you could use to uh, yeah, leverage that, I guess? Like, um, can you go into some details, sorry? Well, strategies for RankBrain ties into, like most of the strategies, into, into content production. So what you're trying to do with 
Rank Brain. Is, rank Brain ultimately is, is trying to work out, we've got all these new questions and we've never heard them before, but we can compare similar searches in the past that we've had that we've given these results to and the human metrics from these results are someone who's followed that link and gone to a website and stayed on the website a long time and gone to multiple pages. So we know that the human experience has been good when we've answered this question like this. So all Rank Brain is doing is trying to look at things, look at content sideways. Okay, so horizontally as opposed to vertically. So from a, a strategy perspective, I always say try to work at the intent of the question, not just the keywords. If forget keywords. Keywords are dead. They're not dead, but I mean, I have a blog on this, but they're dying. Okay, if they were a made up, a made up number, but if they were worth 100 out of 100 pre-panda, now they're worth 15, right? Eventually, they'll be worth five. And one of my pet gripes with SEO companies is the biggest con in SEO is, you know, oh, this package comes with 10 keywords. This package comes with 20 keywords. Would you like 20? It's so much better. Oh, I hate it. And, and we get so many clients that say, well, how many keywords do we get? You get unlimited keywords. It's not about the keywords. It's about the content. I can have 50 keywords in a page. I wouldn't, but I could have 50 keywords driving a page, right? It's not about the keywords. That's just how SEO companies sell their wares. They're used car salesmen in Parramatta Road. Not all of them, obviously. <laughs> Unless you want to buy a car, then talk to me afterwards. Um, but by and large, it's, so, oh, it's an industry of street corner mountebanks, to put it mildly. We've got time for one more. Yes? Hi. Um, my question is related to the social media. Yeah. Um, like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, like they're, they're like big in the market of getting customers onto your website as well. Yeah. So the biggest problem is you could spend like some money on each platform as well as on Google. Like, and sometimes they they go hand in hand, and sometimes it's like really hard for the customers who are like small business owners, and it's kind of uh, becomes unfair uh, for the uh, people who just want to start their business as compared to have really big people in the market already. Like, what is what is the trick around that? But that's a great question because social media is the big con. If you've got a finite amount of dollars to spend, if 85 to 90% of people click on the organic search and one to one and a half or 10 to 15% click on the paid, on the pay-per-click ads, okay? You put your money, you know, I always say take the boat to where the fish are and drop a big net. Don't try to get the fish to come to you, okay? Social media is a great way of getting likes and, you know, oh, look at me, I'm so popular. And then you're going out of business. I would rather put my money in organic search which is quantifiable, and in pay-per-click or retargeting or some other form of paid advertising where I can measure it when it's all about results and my bottom line, not about warm fuzzies, oh my God, I've got you know, 74 likes today, aren't I wonderful, let me just go down the dole, right? Because I've gone out of business, right? It's not about that. So if you've got a finite amount of money, prioritize. Organic search, right, is, is where the, the, the largest share is. Paid search, very good and works brilliantly in some, and in other areas it's like a bottomless pit. Social media is the other end. In some industries it's huge, fashion, et cetera, right? There's certain industries that you can kind of invert to a degree, right? And especially if you're in e-commerce, you might want to do a lot of the paid stuff. But ultimately, if you're a small business, spend the money where it will do you the most good and social isn't going to be that to start with. All right. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Um, a round of applause. Thank you.